Uh, showing up is important. Uh, showing up is what we as Christians do. Um, serving the community, serving the world. Uh, problem is that a lot of times uh, we get sidetracked by life. And things just come into our lives that, and take away our energy and take away our ability to focus on God's work. And I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about energy. Having the energy to do the work uh, that God wants us to do. And that's not easy. I want to uh, I want to share with you just a little bit um, just a little bit about the different flavors of energy that are out there. And we all recognize this one, right? You get up in the morning and you have a cup of coffee and it gives you that jolt, you know, and I like coffee and I like to get the cup and then uh, when we were driving to Louisiana, I would have a cup in the morning and then I would have one at 10 o'clock and then we would stop for lunch and the guys would have water or Coke or something and I would have another cup of coffee and sometimes if I drive a lot across the country, I'll have a, I'll have a number of cups of coffee and then a Coke and then a Pepsi because then I want to change up a little bit, you know. So by the end of the day, I'm having Coke and, and Pepsi and I, uh, I stay away from Dr. Pepper. That's the one I don't like. It's just too much jolt, you know. But by the end of the day, I have that energy that just makes you feel like you're going you're gonna to just pop, right? I mean, you, you, your hands are shaking because you have had so much caffeine and your body is just, you know, you feel like your heart is going to pump out of you. I mean, it's insane. That's a flavor of energy that sometimes we get, right? Flavor of energy. My favorite flavor of energy is this next slide that you're going to see, and a lot of you are going to relate to that. It's when you work out, right? Um, if, if you played the sports, I played soccer when I was in high school, and then after a game, that's how you feel, you know. Um, I went on bike rides in, in the last few years, and one time I did a 100 miles uh, ride down in uh, Castle Rock. And when you're done with it, you're just dead. You're just exhausted. But it's a flavor of energy, right, that you feel. It feels good when you work out and, that, and, and you get tired. And then you get some rest and you wake up next day and you feel like a 10 times stronger. And I love that flavor of energy. That's a great flavor. I want to experience it all the time. The problem is we're too lazy. We don't work out enough, right? So we experience different kinds of energy all the time. Look at this next little picture. How many of you relate to this next, uh, next, uh, Jasmina? Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop bugging her, guys. Okay, they are ignoring me completely. I'm going to just wait. Can we have the next slide, please? We have slides, right? <laughs> I am beginning to feel a tinge of that energy right now. Right there. Just a little, just a little bit, you know. <laughs> but we are all familiar with this, right? We are all familiar with this. Something doesn't go right, right? Like just, it just didn't. Because she got bombarded by three other questions, you see. And, and, uh, and then you, you start feeling like things are not going my way. And uh, we get angry, right? First thing in the morning, you get this morning. I uh, came to church early, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm on 64th. There is nobody on 60 between Sheridan and Wadsworth. There is not a single car other than me on that road at 7 this morning. And the speed limit is 35, and, I am, and I'm going 40. And the lady behind me in a little car with two dogs, and they're jumping all over the place, you know. She just comes behind me as fast as she could, passes me. You shouldn't be passing on this road. It's not one of those roads. It's just one lane, you know. And she just passes me and just steps on the gas like crazy, and I'm feeling like, what are you doing? I need to smack you because... There are people here walking with kids in the morning and, and bicycle people riding and, you know, what are you doing? And then I look down to see how fast I was going because I'm thinking maybe something's wrong with me and I'm going 10 miles an hour. No, I was going 40. But you get that energy, you see, 
that it just, it just changes your mood instantly and you become angry. That's a flavor of energy that we all experience in our lives, you see. Um, how about this next one? Celebration. That's a good energy, isn't it? Maybe we go to a party, birthday party for somebody. And you know it's going to be fun. And uh, you let go of your problems and you take a gift and you take a card. And you know there is going to be food and we're going to be drinking and we're going to be talking and we're going to be laughing and we're going to be reminiscing and we're going to be talking to friends. Little kids, they love to go to birthday parties, right? Because it's fun. And that's a, that's a flavor of energy that we can experience. What I'm trying to do here this morning is trying to get you to think about uh, being able to recognize what kind of energy you have in your day. Right now, for example, Saturday morning, right? We're sitting in church. I'm looking around, and I see just about everybody is relaxed. Maybe there are a few people that are not. They're usually sitting all the way in the back. No, I'm just kidding. I'm giving them a hard time. But, uh, you know, you're relaxed. You don't have to worry about too many things. Um, you are not in a rush because Saturday we don't do a lot of appointments, right? So the energy is kind of cool today. We are relaxed. We want to have that kind of, that kind of energy. Um, grief, that's, a, that's an energy. That's a different kind of energy. Maybe on a particular day, you go to the grave, uh, graveyard to visit the grave of somebody, and you feel sadness, and you feel loss, and that kind of energy is not so great. But we all experience it. We all go through that. You see how you can recognize different kinds of energy in your life? This next picture is from... Uh, I punched in a war, uh, and, I, and, I came, and this little boy showed up. Um, I don't know where this is taken, but this is a, yeah, the little boy. The little boy. The little boy. The little boy. Let's have the little boy. There you go. <laughs> okay. See, when you look at that picture, what do you see? Is it just grieving? It's not grief. It's not, obviously, it's not celebration or joy. Well, what is it? It's devastation. You know what I mean? It's, it's, and, and how many of us have experienced this when you come to a point in your life where you're devastated? So it's not just grief. It's like, I don't know where I'm going to go from here. I can't, I can't win. Where is God? And that's a kind of energy that drives people away from God. Because Satan comes into our lives with tragedies and with problems that we apparently cannot overcome. And then uh, people just say, I don't believe in God anymore. I give up. I can't, you know. I'm not getting the answers that I need. Where is God when this was going on in my life? So you have that, that kind of energy, too, in our lives that we all experience from time to time. It's good to recognize these things. It's good to recognize it because this is what drives your day, and this is what is going to make your day either successful and happy or unsuccessful and miserable and frustrating. So... Your morning. The morning is the perfect time. The, mor the morning when you get up determines what kind of energy you're going to have that day. This is when you have to decide, and this is a perfect opportunity. And I know this from my own experience, so I'm sharing this from my own experience. In the morning is when you decide if you're going to have a great day or a bad day. And there are several factors that come into play every morning as we get up. One of the things that I believe strongly in is that in order to have energy, you must get rid of energy drainers. And that needs to happen first thing in the morning. There are things that suck away our life. There are things that take away our energy. There are things that make us depressed. 
There are things that make us just not in the right place. You see, one of those things is what, you, what, what we see right there on the screen. You see, you get up in the morning, some people get up in the morning, and the first thing they do is they uh, turn on the news. And let me tell you this. I don't care if you are a Christian or a non-Christian. I don't care if you are a conservative or a liberal. I don't care who you're going to vote for in November. When you turn on the news, there is going to be something in there that is going to irritate you, that is going to drain you, that is going to take away your energy. Something. When I came to this country in the early 70s, we had news. You remember, those of you who are old enough, they were in the evening for a half an hour. And in, I lived in Chicago, and there was a guy who would tell us what the weather was going to be like, and there was another guy that told us what the White Sox did and what the Cubs did, and there was a guy that told us a little bit about what was going on in the world, and then there was movies, and then there was MASH, and then there was series, and all of that stuff. Now I'm telling you how old I am, right? No, uh, I love Lucy. That was already past its time, but even back then. So, but this is what the news was, right? And then how it evolved, you had uh, Turner and CNN, and all of a sudden it was 24 hours around the clock. And then you had Fox, and then you had now, if you go on a cable, you can literally find hundreds of news outlets out there that are constantly doing news 24-7. And people have become hooked on it. You see, we would not have 100 outlets out there if it was not profitable for them. Why is it profitable for them? Because millions of people are watching it, and therefore uh, they can sell advertising. So a lot of people are hooked on this. And guess what I tried this year? When my mother was sick, when I had other things, I turned it off. There for, a, there for a period of time in June, I turned it off for six or seven weeks. And guess what happened? I came back. I didn't watch any news. I just wasn't interested. I had more, more terrible things to deal with. And I came back, and America was still here. My job was still here. My bills were still here. My friends were still here. My church was still here. All of the things that are important to me personally in my life, they were still here. I didn't watch any news. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't care. Well, my life didn't change. I think this is one of the big things that drains energy away from people. Because people get hooked in, on, the, in, on this, and they just get hooked, and they can't let go. And it irritates, it drains, it frustrates, it makes you angry. So you get up in the morning, you do this, you know how the rest of your day is going to go. Then you get into a car, next thing you know, in the morning, and then you go to work, right? And then you run into this guy. No, no, let's stay back with the car, Jasmina. You run into this guy. And this guy is on the phone, and he's drinking coffee, and he's smoking a cigarette, and he's throwing garbage out of his window, and he's cutting you off at the same time. Right? And then you honk at him to let him know, hey, what are you doing? And then he flips you off and cusses you all day long. And that's how you, we start our day, right? Well, that's going to drain your energy. It's going to, you know, so you, you have to get up in the morning and instead of watching the news, spend a little time uh, talking to God, you know. Just say, hey, Lord, you know, I, I don't need to watch the news because the world is in your hands. You're in control. So it doesn't matter what they're going to say on this channel or that channel. You're in control. So I'm going to let go of that. And then the next thing you got to do is say, so, so you see, you have to get rid of stuff. Get rid of stuff that takes away your energy. And the next thing you say, hey, I know I'm going to be driving to work now. Richard, this message is for you specifically. And then uh, I'm going to be relaxed. I'm not going to let people get to me. 
You know, I'm not going to let them just ruin my day. If they cut me off, I guess I'll just handle it. I'll just let, let go. I'm not going to... I'm not going to let them throw me out of my peace of mind mode, you see. So you have to make these conscious decisions, and, they, and not just with it. I mean, the next one that Jasmina had on, the, on, on uh, uh, is work. You finally get there, and then what? You're frustrated, right? Maybe you have a boss you don't get along. Maybe you have employees you, you, that don't listen. I mean, and, and all of these things, they take away our peace and they take away our energy that we should be using to do the work for God. And I'm getting to that point. Miller told me uh, in, the, in the period between the sermons, he says, do you realize that the first verse you read was like half an hour into your sermon? I said, yeah, I do, but we're going to get to verses too. See, so these things, they, they take away our peace. We need to be able to get rid of it. If you want to lose weight, they say that the best surest way to lose weight is to detoxify your body first. So you start drinking water with lemon, right? You start exercising, you start going to sauna, you start doing things that are going to cleanse your system. Once your system is cleansed, then they say it's easy to lose weight, you see. But first you have to cleanse. So if you want to have good energy in life, if you want to be serving God, right, you got to cleanse your life from these things that are draining us. Another one is violence, all sorts of violence that we are all exposed to on a daily basis in the American society. Movies, videos, video games, YouTube, TikTok, I mean, you name it. The most popular stuff out there is violence. And then you have violence in the city. Then you have a violence in our neighborhood. Then you have protests. Then you have crazy people out there, you know, pointing guns at each other. I mean, it's just insane, Right? You look at it, it's draining. You participate in that, it's draining. It drains away your spirituality. It drains away the goodness that comes to you from God. God wants us to be connected with Him. God wants us to feel His love. And then we get involved in all of these. You see how the whole thing is set up, I think on purpose, by Satan. To just ruin us spiritually. So these are the things we got to get rid of our life. Then you come home, and then the next thing you're doing is you're fighting, arguing. You know, you're having arguments with each other. And how draining is that? How many couples here that do this? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I mean, people just bicker and argue and about, you know... And you go for an hour, and you go for two hours. And how draining is that? It sucks the life out of you, you see. And then not just husband and wives. Nowadays, we live in a society where it's okay to argue with everybody about everything. People are arguing about politics. People are arguing about religion. People are arguing about everything. If you want to have peace, you got to let go. You know, I come to... I come to a personal position where <clears throat> I'm recognizing that we are all living in a free country and people have the right to be whatever they want to be. If they want to be liberal, that's fine. If they want to be conservative, I'm cool with that. If they have a gay lifestyle, if they're super conservative and they and they live an Amish lifestyle somewhere on a farm in Ohio. I'm cool with that. I don't want to change you. I don't want to convert you to my way of thinking. I don't want to argue with you about your politics. I don't want to argue about, uh, with you about your religion. We live in a free country. I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to argue with anybody. And it has become normal now in this society that everybody's arguing. Used to be a time when people minded their own business. Used to be a time when nobody knew who I voted for, nobody knew what party I belonged to, nobody knew what church I went to. Because we just minded our own business. Now everybody, now when we do these kinds of things, it takes away our energy, our good energy. And you come home 
and you are drained. And the last thing that also I think one of the things that we need to get rid of, that we need to cleanse, is these people. They're called energy vampires. You see, these people that just will not stop. People who complain about everything. People who nag you all the time. People who criticize you all the time. People that you can never please. You're always going to do wrong, no matter what you do. They could be your mother. They could be your father-in-law. They could be your cousin. They could be your uncle. They could be your neighbor. And they are just the kind of people that, that, that will just ruin your day. And you go and you spend a half an hour with them, and you feel like you need to go on a, on a three-week vacation. You want to have energy? You got to disconnect. You got to say, no, I'm not going to be a part of your life. I love you. Sometimes you can't get rid of them because they're family. I love you. But let's have some boundaries here. You see, I, because I don't need to listen to all of that stuff. And you know what? I don't want to say these people are bad people. I don't know what their experience was. Maybe they had a terrible thing in their life that happened to them and turned them into this kind of a person. So I don't want to judge them. But I don't need to absorb all of that negativity into my life. So these are the energy drainers. We want to be connected to God, but all of these things, they need to be, you got to clear them up. You got to get rid of them. So, cleansing is number one. Number two is focusing on our purpose. You get up in the morning and you decide that you're going to cleanse your day. And then you decide also, first thing in the morning, you got to decide... I'm going to focus on my purpose. Why? Why? Why am I here? Acts 1.8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power. Energy. The right kind of energy, you see. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. That's the purpose. We get up in the morning and maybe you're a professor at a university. Maybe you're a nurse. Maybe you're going to drive a truck all day. Whatever, whatever. But this is our purpose. Made very clear our purpose is to be His, Jesus' witnesses. Where? Here, in my city, in my state, in my country, on the whole earth. It says on the whole earth. So you, when I get up in the morning, I got to ask myself, Lord, what's my purpose? And I have to refocus my mind on that purpose. We had a testimony this morning from Sherry, who works as a nurse in a hospital, St. Anthony's, and she went to a room where a man had a, a tumor on his brain, and she simply asked them if she could pray for them. A husband and wife were there. That's our purpose. So you get up and you cleanse and you focus, refocus your mind. I'm, I'm a servant of God. Today I'm going to be his witness. Today I'm going to show up. Today I'm going to make, do my part. I'm going to make somebody's life better today. Sherry, she did this with prayer for somebody. Kim and all of our crew there, they do that with food and shoes for the homeless people. Richard and Perron, they do that when they come here during the week to fix things around the church, you see, and put the lights up and did a lot of work for us here at the church, you know. So everybody here in this room is doing something, you see. Aldi and Kay, they're fixing the chairs. I, I mean, I can look throughout the room, and there are everybody in this room has been doing something here for the Lord. You see, the focus is, what can I do? How can I be a witness for God? That's my focus. And you do that, 
Now, now, now you have something to go on. Now you're on the right track for this day. And this needs to be repeated day after day, day after day, you see. But now you're on the right track. Now you can walk into this earth. And Jasmina is going to show you the picture of this earth that I just picked. Look at this picture. This is a picture of the planet Earth in chaos. And that's what our planet is. You have poverty. You have people and little kids living in mud, covering themselves with garbage bags. All over the world. You have poverty like you can't even imagine right here in the United States of America. You have wars, violence, rapes, disasters, killings, beheadings. You have governments that are killing their own people. You have factions, religious groups fighting each other, Muslims and Christians and Hindus and Everybody's, you, this is the world we walk into, right? You get up in the morning, when you're getting up in the morning and you're trying to do all of this to cleanse yourself and to have the right kind of energy, this is what you're walking into. This is the world of Satan. This is the world of anger and violence and hate and prejudice and racism and murder. That's the wor world that we have to face on a daily basis. Let's be very realistic about it, you see. But... Look what Romans 8 says, Romans 8, 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, the right kind of energy, right? The right kind of power. These are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to do what? To fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, or Father. So the Bible tells us, you know what? Yeah, you're going to walk out there into this world of chaos and violence. A world where everybody's afraid. A world where everybody's scared. What's going to happen after November 3? What's going to happen with the economy? What's going to happen with pandemic? What's going to happen with the wars between China and the United States? What's going to happen with the price of oil? I just talked to Efren. He works in the oil fields. Um, and the price of oil is down. And they don't have as much work as they would like to. I look at the list of the churches. They send us this, <coughs> this report <coughs> of the giving that happens in each church, Adventist church, around the conference. And I look at these churches where most of the members work in the oil fields up north. You know, Cheyenne and Greeley and Wyoming. And all of those churches are su now suffering financially. And people are afraid. I, I pastored in uh, Rawlins, Wyoming. They have a refinery over there. And uh, in good times when the price of gas is high, I mean, that little city that has 30,000 people on average can go up to as many as 70,000, 80,000, 90,000 people living there. And when it, then when everything dries out, it goes down to 10, 15,000 people. Churches become empty. Stores become empty. People lose their jobs. We live in a world that's scary. But the Bible says, hey, you know, wait a minute. If you are led by the Spirit of God, then you're the son of God. You're a daughter of God. You did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear. You know, look at that. Look at what that says. You know what that says, that verse? It says that if you have fear in your life, that you are controlled by the spirit of bondage. That's what it says. If you're afraid what tomorrow is bringing, then the wrong kind of Spirit is controlling you. And me. It applies to all of us because we all go through periods of fear. See, so the, the, this moment here today, right now, is basically designed to say, hey, we cannot be people of fear. 
because God is in control. God is in charge, regardless of what happens in November, regardless of what happens to pa pandemic, regardless of what happens with whatever, you see, all of these things, it doesn't matter because God is in charge. And we have received his spirit, the spirit that is not the spirit of bondage, but the spirit of adoption. In other words, when you and I were lost, abandoned in some orphanage, you see, God shows up and says, I'm going to adopt you. That's what happened. And when you are adopted, what happens? You become a child. God is your father. Now when we get up in the morning, we pray and we say, Father. I say, Father God, here I am. What are you going to have me do today? I pray to my father. He's in charge. I don't have to be afraid. So lesson number three is we do not fear. When you get up in the morning and when you cleanse all of this junk out of your life and when you focus on your purpose, which is to serve God, and then you have to step into the right frame of mind, which says, I don't fear. I don't fear what this day is going to bring. Because if I lose this job today, I'm going to get the better one tomorrow, my friend. And, ju and that goes for, for everybody. If I don't do what, I, what needs to happen today, God is going to help me to do it next time. I'll come back. Because he's my father. He's in charge. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. And if children, then what? Heirs. Heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So, when my dad died, whatever he had, he left it to me and my brother. When my mother died, whatever she had, now it belongs to me and my brother. You are God's children. Therefore, you are God's heirs. Well, what's God going to leave you? Well, the Bible tells us that God created heaven and earth. This earth that we live on, we're not going to be afraid of it. This is ours. God left it to you and I. He didn't leave it to the guy in the White House or the guy in Peking, China, president? No. He left it to his children. He didn't leave it to governments and armies and soldiers. He left it to his children, you and I. That's yours. So when you get up in the morning and when you walk outside, you're getting ready to walk outside, you have to realize, you know, God is my father. I'm walking into the world that he's leaving to me. And I'm going to go do his work today. That needs to be our attitude. And that creates the right kind of energy in your life. Because that now puts you um, in a driver's seat. You are not somebody that everything happens to. You are somebody that does things to everybody else and to this planet. You are then the, in charge. And that's a good kind of energy if we can reframe the whole thing, you see. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And that time is coming when we are all going to be glorified together with Jesus. Acts 1.8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive the right kind of energy not the sadness, not the frustration, not the fear, but the right kind of energy. And you shall be what? 
witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Purpose once again, right? That's our purpose. That's your purpose. Whatever you do in your life, whatever your profession is, do that well. Do it well for yourself, for your family, and for God. Because he gave you those gifts, right? He gave you gifts to be a great electrician. Do that well. You see, whatever you're doing, do that well. But remember always that your purpose is to be a witness for God. That's number one. And to do that effectively, we need to have the right kind of energy every morning when we get up. We can't have this fear mentality. We can't have this worry and anxiety mentality. We have to understand every morning when we get up that God has leaving this earth to us as an inheritance. We are in charge. So what do we do? So how does this power pr propagate itself? How do we do that? And I want to I give you the super simple answer. And there's the last slide. And I forget, I was going to put on the screen who, who said this. I think it was some kind of a Greek. It was not the philosopher this time. I think it was some kind of a playwright. And I have it, but I didn't put it on the screen. And this guy says, kindness gives birth to kindness. The power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness for Christ. He's basically summarized in this. You don't need to know the Bible from theology and all of that stuff. You don't need to know all of the doctrines. All you need to do is have the will. Be willing to go into this world and overcome it by love and by kindness. That's what we do. That's what it means to show up. That's what it means to understand the purpose of God in our lives. When we go down to Louisiana, we're not going to make even a dent. When we go downtown and you are dealing with 10, 12, 20,000 homeless people, we are not even making a dent in solving that problem. But maybe somebody's life is going to be uh, saved for eternity because of that because you showed up maybe you offered to pray for somebody showed a little bit of kindness and you changed their life forever maybe you put a bowl of hot soup into somebody's hand and you changed their life forever not because all of a sudden they're never going to be hungry again but because they have now realized that there is God because a moment ago they felt alone. They felt abandoned. They felt like nobody cares. Like Skip says in the video. Everybody showed up in the first two weeks. And now we are forgotten. And when people are forgotten, when they feel that they are forgotten by God, what do they say? I give up. I don't believe in God anymore. So you come in and you show up with the right attitude, with the right energy. Maybe all you do is put your arm on your hand on their shoulder. Say, let me pray for you. And their whole faith is revived. Because now they realize there is somebody. They're not alone. They're not abandoned. So you know what? If you want to give your life to Jesus in this way... I'm not going to ask you to stand up today. Me and Milos are preparing to do a baptism on the 14th of uh, November in the afternoon, Sabbath afternoon at 4 o'clock. So if there is anybody here who wants to give their life to Jesus, that's when I'm going to ask you to stand up and plan on coming. If you know somebody else in your life that needs to give their life to Jesus, then I'm going to give you advice on how that can happen. Go and be kind to them. Do you have somebody in your life who is mean and nasty and you don't like dealing with them? You want to win them over for Christ? Go and be kind. Show a little bit of kindness to them this week. 
See how that works out. See what happens. Just a little bit. Change a little bit of your attitude. Do it with the right kind of energy. With the right kind of positivity. God bless you as you try to digest all of this material. And as you try to implement it in your life. Amen.